A new century has come to Europa, and with it, revolutionary change. Each day, new industries and technologies help to ease the burden on the common man, as well as to radically transform society. Across the continent, engineers, scientists, and visionaries all push the bounds of what was once believed possible, finding new uses for the power generated by steam, oil, and coal. Railways have begun to link major cities. Factories are being constructed. Change is everywhere. It is in this era of smoke and steel that our story begins, with a remarkable man arriving in a rather unremarkable place. One day in late autumn, Nikola Tesla, traveling with his young daughter Vesna, arrived in the very heart of Transylvania, and there began to build the factory. It was to be a sprawling city-state, a center of innovation and industry, unlike anything seen before or since. Tesla invited the brightest minds from across the globe to come to the factory to aid him in his pursuit of progress. He wished to make a name for himself, to usher mankind into a golden era of technological marvels. The factory was his way to do so. Such a place was bound to attract attention, especially considering the secrecy with which the citizens treated their work. Rumor began to swirl of miraculous and fanciful inventions, of bizarre and wild experimentations. But really no one knew what Nikola Tesla and his cadre of engineers were doing behind the factory walls. Silence and smog hung thick over the domes and towers of Tesla's city-state, as the entire continent slowly began to forget the factory's mystery. It became a curio, an odd thing to be puzzled over while enjoying a meal, but nothing more. All that was about to change. Over the course of one dark and dreadful night, a series of trains departed from the looming shadows of the factory, each bound for a different capital city of a European power. On board, emissaries sent by Tesla himself, each offering a chance to witness a miracle. First to arrive was the envoy to the Saxony Empire, who immediately upon arrival requested an audience with the Emperor. The Emperor, well aware of Tesla's reputation as a feckless dreamer, was amused by the audaciousness of the request, and accepted, more out of curiosity and good humor than any belief in the Emissary's claims. However, when the audience took place a month later, Tesla's dreams proved anything but feckless. The emissary presented to the assembled nobility a crate, the front of which, after a short speech, fell to the ground and from it emerged a four-legged machine. This auto-machine, as the presenter called it, was one of many, of all shapes and varieties. Tesla had, with a single, deft stroke of genius, rewritten the course of Europa, and indeed the entire world. Auto machines could be designed to serve any purpose, from mining and logging to farming and everyday housework. And while none knew it yet, auto machines would soon even transform war. The auto machine demonstrations had the desired effect. Word spread quickly, and excitement grew to obsession over this new and largely unknown technology. Every nation in the world saw the possibilities presented by these mechanical wonders, and soon they had all negotiated contracts with the factory for auto machines of their own. Before long, representatives of the great nations of Europa began to arrive at the factory to oversee the design of their nation's own unique auto machines and mechanized utility suits. Eventually, Tesla could not keep up with demand and reluctantly had to sell his less advanced patents 
to satiate the hunger for auto machines. With their licensed patents, every nation began to churn out armies of the lumbering mechs, while Tesla continued to amass a fortune that was rumored to rival that of entire countries. In just a few years, the presence of mechs and auto machines had become a mainstay in even the most idyllic countryside. Their increased production had driven down their cost, and as a result, everyone had adopted auto machines into their day-to-day -day life. The public became accustomed to these new tools with surprising speed. Most still could not comprehend the machines, but they were seen, accepted, and before long, passed into familiarity. Some complained of the noise, or the smell, or the oil polluting the land. Some even argued for the old ways, claiming that faster and more powerful was not always better. An oxen plow, a hand-pulled saw, horseback cavalry, these engendered feelings of dignity and honor to some. And these new machines represented a dark and grimy future full of terrifying unknowns. Yet these voices were rarely heard, and even more rarely given credence by those in positions of power. But perhaps they should have been. It was around this time that signs for a disastrous future began to appear, though none heeded them. All the great powers had begun to integrate mechs into their armed forces, resulting in larger and deadlier creations than ever before. The Saxony Empire, a long belligerent power in Europa, had begun to stockpile oil and steel, and to build a great army in the west. To the east, the Rusviat Tsar came to place an inordinate amount of trust in a rather mysterious advisor, Grigory Rasputin, who many claimed was a traitor or an agitator, or perhaps something even worse. Europa without knowing it, was sliding inexorably towards war. The continent was a powder keg, and it would take only a small spark to set it all ablaze. <laughs>